We're going to talk about the structures of the ear, the anatomy and the physiology, and we'll start with the outer ear. So anatomy means the body structure and physiology is the body function. Sound impulses pass through the auditory tract and they're converted from first acoustical, those compression waves, to mechanical, the bones, the movement of the middle ear, hydraulic, the fluid in the cochlea, then there's a chemical reaction and an electrical ascent energy, actual impulse is sent up to the auditory cortex. And then sound reaches the brain and becomes the signals and these meaningful messages. For the outer ear, the auricle is the most noticeable portion. It varies from person to person in size and shape. It has a funnel-like position that gathers sound waves from the environment. It's made entirely of cartilage, twists, turns, and indentions. The middlemost portion is the concha. It's helpful for funneling sound into the ear canal or the external auditory canal. It's important for localization. There's a reason you have two ears. It helps you figure out whether the sound is coming from the front, behind, left, or right. The shape of the ears, the way they face forward to our face, helps funnel sounds towards us, forward in the forward direction. The tragus is that little piece by the, the opening to your ear canal. You can use your fingers and cover your tragus. That's the most effective way to block sounds. Some animals can voluntarily close their tragus. And the anatomy of the auricle, so in addition to helping to determine where the sound is coming from, more important sounds coming forward to us and less important sounds from behind, the anatomy is um, best at delivering high frequency sounds rather than low frequency sounds because high frequency sounds are more important for our speech. And here it is. So we have the outer ear and the external auditory canal. The outer ear terminates at the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. It sits in mastoid air cells. So the external auditory canal or meatus or the ear canal begins at the concha, extends inward at a slightly upward angle for approximately one inch, it is elliptical, it is lined with skin. The outer portion is cartilage, the inner portion of the ear canal is set in bone. There are wax glands that produce an oil fatty substance, um, earwax, it's also known as cerumen, soft, moist, and brown. The cerumen exit the ear naturally when the walls of the ear canal are distorted from chewing or speaking. So you don't, there's an expression, you shouldn't put anything larger than your elbow in your ear. So what does that mean? It means you shouldn't put anything in your ear. You shouldn't use Q-tips. The wax comes out naturally on its own. It's supposed to. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if it becomes dark and hard, it might be difficult to remove, and you can see an audiologist or a nose and throat doctor to remove it. You have to be careful using Q-tips. So I do use Q-tips, but it's you have to use them the right way. So you never push the Q-tip inward, because what you're doing with that is you're just pushing the wax more forward into your ear canal, and you're making it harder to come back out. So when you use a Q-tip, just use it in the outermost portion of your ear canal and go in like a circular motion. There are also hair cells present along with the cerumen and the object of, I mean, the purpose of the cerumen and the hair cells is to keep foreign objects, for example, insects, from getting into your ear canal, into the more important part of your ear canal, back where the eardrum and the tympanic membrane sits. So this wax and the hair cells are only in the outer portion of your ear canal. In the inner portion, um, there are no glands and no, no hair. So um, infants and small children, the ear canal is on a different angle. Whenever you look into a person's ear canal with an otoscope, you pull the ear canal, you pull the pin on back up and out to straighten it so that you can get a clear angle of the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane, also known as the eardrum, is situated at the end of the ear canal where it's protected and kept at a constant temperature. The ear canal acts as a filter to reduce low frequency sounds and a resonator for frequencies between 2,000 and 7,000 hertz. So where do our speech frequencies fall? Basically between 2,000 and 7,000 hertz. So the ear canal is better at push, bringing through sounds important to speech than low frequency sounds which are associated with noise. TMJ syndrome, maybe you've heard that. It feels like ear pain. It's not 
it's not coming from the ear. It's coming from a disalignment of the jaw, but it could be perceived as ear pain. Um, so any sort of myofascial pain dysfunction, the pain is perceived in the ear, but it's not really a problem um, of the ear, but it could lead to headaches and dizziness, shoulders and back pain, and brought on by emotional stress and tension. But it's not an issue with the um, outer ear.